Are you ready for another company to be included and inducted to my why I hate mining stocks playlist? That's exactly what this video is all about. If you're new to this channel, my name is Mario Skonieczny. I run Microcap Explosions, a website dedicated to microcap stocks, which are ignored and underfollowed by the investment industry. I also wrote about 10 books on investing, one of which is available for a free download at microcapexplosions.com. I also created valueinvestinguniversity.com as a free resource to make you a more intelligent investor. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, pure gold mining has been introduced to me by one of you guys. So we're going to do the same exercise as, as we did before. And just to be clear, I don't even follow these companies anymore. So, you know, you guys send me this stuff and, you know, for me, it's just another deja vu. But before I go any further, I just want to make one thing clear. I'm not making this to make fun of anybody. I don't think that the management is crooked. I don't think that investors are crooked. I don't think that the people that interview these CEOs are crooked. All I'm saying is presenting how it is and showing you how tough and difficult this business is. And then... From that, you can make your own decisions on whether you want to get involved. Let's go ahead and go. All right, welcome back inside our Vancouver Practice Studios and welcome back in studio with us, Darren LeBrenz, the CEO of Pure Gold. Darren, great to see you again. How are you doing? Doing very well, thank you. Uh, you should be because you had a very good feasibility study that you released yesterday. Now, uh, before we discuss the details of it, I know you had a call with your investors. And so the feasibility study is a... It's like an appraisal document where for a project you are presented with, you know, what it's going to cost you, you know, what the revenues are going to be, what the costs are going to be, what the cash flow is going to be. And when you have a document like this, then you can finance it, right? You can finance it uh, with equity or you can finance it with debt. I mean, that's what the companies want. They, they don't want to dilute a lot or so sometimes... They will go and get debt because now they can say, "Hey, this is how much this project is going to make. This is what you. Uh, this is how we're going to repay you if it's in a debt." So that's what this is. And, mm -hmm. and a topic that came up on the call I thought was fascinating was about a quality project. And you feel, and I think a lot of your shareholders feel that that this project is is a quality project. What do you guys mean by that? Well, there's very many ways you can measure the 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 project or the quality of a project. And, and what we like to look to is location, um, size, and, uh, and, and scale effectively of, of a project. And so let's talk about that a little bit and drill down on it. Um, our project's in Red Lake, Ontario. Right. Uh, Red Lake is an iconic mining district. Um, mining started in the 1920s and uh, has been going on uh, since that day. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about size, uh, you know, some people point to a million ounces, uh, five million ounces. Is, it's kind of the size you want to be to be uh, considered one of the you know top tier projects around the world. Mm -hmm. When you look at our project, uh, we've got two and a half million ounces of historic production to produce continuously for 36 years. Uh, last week we put out a, a new resource statement which uh, showed two million ounces of indicated resources, another half million ounces of inferred. Mm -hmm. So when you put that together, we're talking about a five million ounce uh, deposit. Right. See, that's a that's a serious deposit. Five million ounces. Uh, yeah, looks good. So far, so good. Our body has size. Uh, we talk about longevity and what does it return to investors or, or what does it do for society? Well, as I mentioned earlier, our project produced for 36 continuous years mm -hmm. yesterday, and we're thrilled about this. We put out a, a new feasibility study that shows an operating mine that will last for 12 years. So you take 36 years. You add another 12, we're at 48 years. And, you know, if that doesn't uh, demonstrate a strong return for investors and impact on society, I'm not, I'm not sure what does. So, so, let's so 12, 12 years, 12 years life at good location, right? I like it. Let's go through some of the numbers. Uh, $95 million to get you into production is, is what this called for. And you, you base this on... $95 million to put it into production. That's very reasonable, yeah off of a, a gold price of $1,275, which, which is, a, is a price I'm sure a lot of people in gold hope never gets there, obviously. <laughs> so keep that in mind. The feasibility study, all of those cash flow projections, I based on the gold price of less than 1300 If we look at the price of gold today, it's 2000 right? 
So, pretty conservative. Hey, we're in the right cycle. If they can make money, good money, with the price of gold of 1275 they're going to be swimming in cash when the price of gold is at 2000 uh, so tell us about some of the some of the key numbers in that yeah well let's start with the uh the initial capital 95 million dollars so that's canadian dollars uh, most projects worldwide we, we express in u.s dollars uh, because we're paid in, in gold which is priced in u.s dollars and and that's 71 million u.s if we look at our peers uh, we're roughly half of the initial capital required to build a project uh, compared to our peers. And, and that's because we can leverage significant infrastructure on site. We have a mill, we have a tailings facility. So from a capital perspective, this is a, a very doable project. So think about this. The money to put it into production is significantly smaller than the competitors because you know it's been operating already and they have some infrastructure on site. So that's pretty good. That translates into very robust economics. Uh, you know, 12 years of mining, uh, we peak out at 125,000 ounces of annual production. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, after tax, we generate uh, $247 million in net present value, uh, 36%. So $247 million of net present value. Remember, that's gold price of 1275. So with the gold price of 2000, Ooh, that net present value should be huge. And internal rate of return. And in fact, when you look at the life of mine, we're generating over 500 million of um, cash flow right. during that 12 year period. So this. Right. So during the 12 year period, 500 million of cash flow, I would say with the price of gold at 2000. Wow. Maybe billion, billion and a half of cash flow over 12 years, right? Probably, I'm guessing. This project has the potential to return um, enormous um, amounts of money to shareholders and investors. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at something else. I'm doing very well. How are you? Not bad, not bad. We, we spoke at the end of April. Uh, a lot of things have happened since then. A lot of good things have happened since then. Um, so why don't we kick off? Just give people new to this story, one minute summary of what you're about, and then we'll kind of get into some of these uh, exciting developments. Yeah, so we're Pure Gold Mining. Uh, our, our flagship asset is the Madsen Red Lake Mine located in Northwest Ontario. Uh, in February of this year, we completed a feasibility study that outlines a, a 800 ton per day underground mine with um, 1 million ounces in reserves at nine grams per ton, which makes it today the highest grade development project in Canada. Okay, so right there, when he said underground mine, if I heard this now, I would run away. Underground, ooh, it has to be high grade. Lots of problems can happen. But uh, so far, it's, it's all fantastic, though. Recently, we announced a 90 million U.S. Uh, debt financing project finance package, which uh, puts us in a position today where we're fully funded for construction and anticipate uh, first gold pour by the end of 2020. Great. Okay. Fully funded gold pour at the end of 2020. So it's an underground mine, and they just put debt on it. I love that, especially for the miners. All right, let's take a look at some news in 2019 first. Okay. So, announces positive feasibility study. Fantastic news. It shows robust economics. They're raising a bunch of money because, you know, they need to put this thing into production now that it has great economics. Pure Gold secures $90 million of construction finance package and announces construction decision for for Red Sun Red Lake Mining. It shows some good results here. Canada's next gold mine on track for the first gold pour in Q4 of 2020. I mean, that's that's fantastic. That's what you want to see, right? The, the first pour is a major milestone. And here, in May 2020, we see... Eric Spratt getting involved. So he puts in 15 million back investment. Notice that they are using his name here for a reason. We didn't see any names listed before, but Eric Spratt is very well known in the industry. So they're using this for the right reasons to, to show, hey, if Eric Spratt thinks we are a good company to invest in, we must be a good 
company to invest in. That's good publicity. They're ramping up construction. They achieve permitting milestone. Wonderful. And look at this. They deliver their first ore to the mill. And then in December, they have their first gold poured at the mine. Time to celebrate. Huge success. It can only get better from here. December 30th, 2020. Let's look at the stock price. December 11, 2020. That's exactly when it peaked. How could that be? They raised the money, successfully put this thing into production, and yet the stock price is not continuing to the moon, but it's going the other way. So in other words, today... The stock price is at the same level or even lower than what it was before the financing came in, before the first gold pour, before all of these successes. Something must have gone wrong. Okay, let's look at 2021. They appoint a vice president of business development. Hmm. Something is cooking within the company. They're replacing some management. They're raising more money. And look at this. On August 3rd, 2021, they declare commercial production. So they put the first gold. Now they declare commercial production. From the press releases, there's nothing that shows me there's any problems. I mean, of course, I'm not reading them because I got better things to do. Oops. January 4th, 2022. Pure transitions to operational leadership and provides a project update. Oh, the management is changing. I thought everything was going well. The company announced today proactive executive management changes which better align operational requirements with professional expertise. In other words, things are not going as well as the management was saying, as the pre-feasibility -feasibil study was saying, because otherwise everybody would be happy with the current management, but we need to change the management to improve and align operational excellence. And then February 2020, Pure Gold announces key management appointments. Okay, this time we're going to get it right. I don't even want to read this. It's just the same, same old, same old. Now, let's look at this guy. Pure gold mining disaster. Hmm. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, everybody. It's Ron from Ron's Basement. Thank you for joining me today. I want to talk about the disaster that has occurred at pure gold mining. If you looked at the stock price, I mean, it's gone from almost $2.40 US, all the way down to right around a dollar right now. I mean, you would think... Mm, it's less than a dollar, actually. Yes, Ron, please continue. ...that uh, the bottom has fallen out of this thing, literally. Uh, but I'm going to give you my perspective on the situation... Please. ...and why I think that uh, at this current price, uh, pure gold stock may represent a out an outstanding value. Could someone please send Ron my playlist to why I hate the gold miners? He might benefit from watching my videos. So uh, I'll do this quickly and unscripted, but uh, in a nutshell, if you don't know already, they announced uh, their first quarter uh, production numbers, I guess it was, and uh, the grade that they ran through their mill was much lower than apparently many people in the market expected. No. No. I am shocked. This never happens in mining. Never. However, uh, there's a great explanation for this. I'm and, sure uh, there is. I'll get to that in a minute. But let me back up. During 2020... Run. the explanation is... Don't ever invest in those companies. That's the explanation. I don't even want to continue with this, okay? 
I'm just inducting it to the list, hyped up over here, financed, feasibility study, first pour, commercial production, bam, on the way down. I don't think I have to say anything anymore. Let's just conclude it here. Thank you for watching.